jump back back there. It's a classic like Rob thing, classic Zomba thing to go for. I would love to see Beast like take a page out of that book, whether it be with Charizard, whether it be with Squirtle, whether it be with Ivysaur, whatever of the Pokemon to try and apply some of his high tempo style into more baits rather than just strictly looking for your best punch. I think the one thing I'm going to be looking for from Beast this set is going to let the other Pokemon get a little bit of shine, but understand with their time in the spotlight is a little bit over. So far, Squirtle is having a really good time here. I don't want to see him switch to Ivysaur just yet until the edge guard allows for it, but it is going to be the wind on the wolf up B that actually does save Squirtle here. We're going to go to Zard, or Zard. We're going to go to Ivysaur. That's not Charizard. And we're going to just try to get the edge guard here, but Jackal understanding the position he's in, just going to roll right out. Yeah, very early switch there over to Charizard. You're eating a ton of damage for it, and it just keeps on going. Ivysaur can do so well in neutral with things like uh, fade back back airs, fade back forward airs. So the fact that we're just seeing the Charizard instantly trying to close out the stock almost sealed Jackal easily being able to take the lead himself, just as you were saying, Larry. Ooh, okay, going to prop is. a little bit too high above the ledge there. That's going to be an easy wolf F tilt there. And once again, it was all Squirtle, and the Squirtle show was going off really well, but then the switch to Ivysaur, and we weren't seeing the exact res results with Ivysaur, so now we're going to switch to Zard, and then Zard just got punished. Going for the waterfall there to try and catch the forward air from ledge. It wasn't just a random waterfall there, but now we're going to see that Squirtle is playing the best today, so we're going to get started with it. But still, Jackal just doing his best to reset neutral and saying, you know what, Beast, you can come to me. Squirtle is doing a lot of jobs just being short, being evasive, forcing Jackal to either put out a meaty Nair or a very well-spaced forward air. The, the Nair trade turning into Squirtle's favor, but he's just not able to find the stock yet. You need to find something like a tech chase or at this percent, I think you can do up tilt into up air, which should close out the stock. Maybe up tilt into waterfall if you can find Squirtle up tilt. Oh, or just a raw waterfall. He got it. Yeah, so that move is extremely big, hence why you can two-frame with it and do a lot of crazy stuff. And then Squirtle at 0% feels a ton better. So remember how I was saying that Jude really only loses to Beast Zard? Right now, I think the Squirtle's actually been performing the best so far in this set here, but it's all going to be all about the cleanup here, especially when we're starting to get out of Squirtle percentage. We're going to have to go to Ivysaur very, very soon here. But once again, Jackal, like you were talking about, is now throwing out these big nares where Squirtle's going to have a little bit of a harder time to get in here. Still, Jackal trying to find a way in. Still, and both players are going to play a little bit of footsies here. I mean, you got to, right? I mean, it's winner's finals. You definitely don't want to drop down into that lower black bracket. But Beast now going to switch on over to the Ivysaur, try and get the Tri-State Twister, but not going to be able to find it. This is a really tenuous kind of switch here. The Squirtle was playing so well, playing footsies. Like, so... Why not just keep that going unless you're so desperate? That kind of desperation can force you into really, really bad positions. So the Charizard is out now, and that is certainly a scary thought for Jackal. Has to worry about a well-spaced back air, of course. Has to worry about up smash out of shield now. Yeah, Beast has to worry about getting out of the corner and not going to be able to get out get out through the platform. Jackal's going to find that back air and reset him right back to Squirtle. Remember what I said at the beginning of the set? How players beat Beast is that they wait for him to hit first, right? That was Beast throwing out an option with Charizard and then Jackal just lining up the back air in the air. Going to be able to switch to the Ivysaur, but it's not going to be the down air that we find. It is going to be the back throw. But Zard out on the table right now, looking for the short hop up air, but instead it will be Jackal getting a nice little combo of his own. Forward throw is not even going to take it. No pummel, but look at this. Stopping the wolf flash onto the stage. Not going to be able to find the down air, and Beast has whiffed a ton so far, but this up throw should be able to do it. I feel like they had that up throw a little bit earlier. Recall that forward throw where they dash into him to push him closer, to push Jackal closer to the ledge, then find the grab, then do the forward throw. He dashed him past the platform. I feel like if he up throwed onto the platform a little earlier, could have had that, but instead it's Beast really behind the eight ball here. Lyric has to find his way back off of ledge again and committing so, so hard to that jump, then air dodge, then a double jump as well, and Jackal just stood there and watched him like he watched a deer in headlights. Yeah, I feel like sometimes we can see the thoughts get processed by Beast, For sure. right? We're seeing the, okay, I want to go here or here or here, but maybe my execution isn't on point, right? And the one Mon that doesn't have the execution on point today is Ivysaur. And we need sure. to be able to hit those down airs, especially on a character like 
Wolf, especially on a fast follower, those down airs can help you a lot. I will say, though, the Squirtle's performing amazingly today, but it will be Jackal coming out of the gate there with a four-piece combo to let Beast know, you know what, he's not letting him have this game easy. Big, big fan of Jackal really implementing late dash attacks into his game plan. It's a trick he picked up uh, where it was more popularized by Moxie of all the wolves, just like finding these late dash attacks to extend your combos, and it forces you off of that Squirtle so quickly. Looking for the footstool up B, that's a big punish, and if your Beast's Ivysaur, hopefully that's able to get a little bit of momentum on your side. I'd see some of these forward airs looking for just an empty hop grab instead. I was just about to say the same thing, Ubel. I feel like sometimes Beast is one of those players that really needs to see like the results in the Mon before we start believing right. in it, right? <laughs> like Beast was able to get a couple of up airs and it's like, all right, Ivysaur is playing well, I can do it. But still, Jackal going for a couple of interesting options that has led for Beast to get a little bit of confidence back, going for the short hop up air again, trying to land with it. Instead though, we'll just get the back throw here. You and got I Tomahawk <laughs> by Ivysaur, you should feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Say it louder, Uber. I mean, it's the okay, come on. <laughs> you know, it happens to everyone. You're really expecting a lot of these arrows, especially from Pokemon with Pokemon oh, Trainer. Oh, all these good, uh, all these good frame data and so much good utility off of these aerials. But the main weakness for all three of them, getting off of ledge. And that's where Jackal has found so much success, particularly against this Charizard. Pin him into the corner and let the big body deal with it. I was kind of waiting for Beast to, you know, jump off the ledge that one time and then actually go high with a Flare Blitz. He always loves to reset that way. But instead, once again, this MVP of the team today, Squirtle, has been getting a ton of mileage off of all these grabs here. But instead, Jackal going to be able to find the F-Tilt as Waterfall has also been doing the job here. Here comes Ivysaur again, trying to become most improved player on this team, but so far it's looking a little bit more difficult here. There's fair double up air, triple up air, and a quad here to even things up. Going for the wolf flash again. Honestly, Jackal has just been playing like all stylish all day, but no tech is gonna lead into an edge guard situation for Jackal and going to lead into the stock loss for Beast. That one's gotta hurt. That entire stock was just perfection. Oh my lord. Going for edge guards, but layered in order to make sure that you have to force Beast to get off the ledge early or else contest with the Wolf Flash, then cover it with a Lingering Nair. On top of that, forward air into four up air combo, recognizing the D.I.N. He's really calling out Beast for these habits that he knows that a lot of players, and including Beast, will fall victim to. Oh, I'm going to get hit away. I'm going to start immediately D.I.ing in and getting hard punished for that and has a lead because of it. Still damage. reverse Nair. Yeah, like you said, Uba, a little bit of damage here. As now Beast going to be able to find the up tilt. Look for the Vine Whip. Jackal, though, is a master at resetting when he feels like the opportunity is not there. But when it is, though, he takes it from 0 to 100, waiting out the switch. It's not going to be enough. Beast pulling the trigger a little bit early on the up smash as well. It will be able to find the back air to even things up. Zard at 79 is not bad, but now you're locked into this character for the rest of the game. Yeah, that's what it can really feel like. Unless Beast is feeling a little bit spicy and going for the late game Squirtle, which is a dangerous play, but the Squirtle has been playing particularly well. But the Charizard seems to always have danger on its mind, but that up-angled Wolf Flash getting Jackal out of the corner with a big, big hit there. Gotta be careful though with all, so many of these track, so many of these traps that are surprisingly difficult to punish with Charizard. Yeah, that was one of the first times we also. Oh jeez, we saw that. We saw the air dodges there. Jackal though rolling behind Beast to avoid the flare blitz, and there's a flare blitz to ensure safety here. Beast though playing very careful here. There's the back throw, so now going to have to be stuck on ledge again, trying to sneak in the back air through the through the ledge, but it's not going to be enough. Still, once again, now you're getting Charizard in center stage. We're going to go for another back throw. It's not going to be enough, but oh, now Beast throw. is in danger percent, but so is Jackal. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Wolf back throw is not a good move. And sitting at 218. Roll here, maybe? No. no just I was thinking the same thing. Oh, he's looking for a grab. Will be able to find it. Will be able to find game two. But I have to say, though, Beast's improvement from game one to game two is very visible. Ivysaur is starting to get a little bit more play. We still need to see those down airs, and we need to start seeing the Zard magic that we know Beast has. Yeah, it almost felt like they were looking for it a little bit earlier, but Jackal's solid discipline as a player makes it really hard for Beast to find a lot of these tricks. Right. I almost want to see, like, see a little bit more commitment to the block strings because it feels like Beast is assuming he's going to get a hit and then go with the dash, go for the tech chase, playing 
if you land something on block as, uh, as Wolf, like you're honestly expecting them to nair out a shield or potentially hold block. So maybe take advantage of that a little more, find a couple cheeky grabs. So we're seeing that here with the Squirtle. Just need to see some of these skills that we're seeing with individual Pokemon extend to the trio. Yeah, we need to see kind of all three cylinders firing all at the same time, right? And that's, sure. the, that's the caveat with PT, right? Your Squirtle can be playing the best, but you know, I, Ivysaur, especially in this matchup, especially versus a fast faller, can definitely shine here. Beast, though, trying to think it out once again, gonna be able to loop in the aerial here. As you were talking about, Ubel, I cannot stress it time and time again, that Wolf Nair has definitely been a pain in Beast's side. Maybe that's... That's the bread and butter of this character. For a while, it used to be laser. For a while, it used to be these forward air combos. But Jackal has always been now. Like, Wolf Mare is the pinnacle and what really makes it hard for characters to sometimes get in on Wolf. Going for the foot but missing the up beat. Going for an up smash as a punish when you could have had so much more. At 60%, you have down throw Vine Whip on the table as well. But Beast kind of getting a little bit lost in the punish and is going to eat the stock for it. Yeah, I want to see the getup attack off the ledge as well here, but now Beast going to have to try and think of something here. Jackal, though, once again, landing with the Nair and now just punishing accordingly. Triple and quadruple up airs all coming in, basically almost sending us into a lap percentage here. There's the forward air from Beast, but still ready to go. Not going to be able to hit the up part of the down and up, as I like to call it, as now Jackal's strings are now looking as perfect as ever. Looking very, very solid here. But Beast is forfeiting all of that spacing in order to get over to Charizard. Only at 92, you weren't feeling that, like, stress. I mean, red percent is red percent, but you're surrendering yourself over to this Charizard and just giving Jackal immediate means to get out of the corner. And he's going to get out of the corner and put immediately so much pressure on. 160, all of this damage, no signs of stopping. Looking for a forward air off the ledge there. Beast is going to need something big here, Lyric, and Jacko is looking like he's not trying to give it to him. This is what I was talking about a little bit earlier with that stuttering thinking right. when it comes to his play. Like, you can see him trying to think out the situation, but we're not seeing the play actually reflect it. Jackal, though, up three stocks to one now as Ivysaur is out, trying to get an up air here, but instead we will be able to at least see one stock here as we're going back to the star player of the match so far, Squirtle, but now you essentially need to play perfect. But we saw from games one and two, once the Squirtle gets in, it's able to get a lot of damage, but now Jackal's playing that keep away game, at least for a little bit. Ooh, oh. Interesting combo route there, and nice. oh, really, he can do it. yeah, bad angle there from Jackal, and suddenly this is a completely even game here, Lyric. Hopefully that stock gives Beast a little bit of that momentum, so he doesn't stop, he doesn't start stuttering and thinking about what should be the proper answer. Instead, he'll just know it, and that kind of momentum can be really dangerous to uh, to overcome as that's kind of how Jackal has been playing this entire set, just knowing what the proper answer is and knowing what he should be doing at any, any waking moment. Still switching on over to Ivysaur and the Zard, gonna be able to escape the escape the the circle from now, but now Beast 153 here, Jackal, even though the SD came into spot, even though it is last stock, it is going to be the Nair at a shield that does get it. Jackal winning 3-0. Not the best showing from Beast, but the glimmers of the play were definitely there. For sure. Just not all together. Like, the Squirtle was playing fantastically. Yes. But Ivysaur was struggling this set. That's what you find so that's what I find so fascinating about Pokemon Trainer is like the blueprint is there. It's yeah. it's not perfect, of course, because even being six or seven years into this game, like no characters completely optimized. But the blueprint is there with uh, Quid. Like you can watch Quid's Ivysaur <laughs> and see what Quid is doing when it comes to sticking onto this character and how to play into any and every matchup, including into the Jackal matchup. You know what's funny is that uh, Beast and I were in the car heading somewhere. I can't remember. Maybe it was home from Failsafe. And Beast said the moment that Quid stops playing Pokemon Trainer, Pokemon Trainer is dead. He has no faith in the character. Listen, Why I don't play know. play them? Because <laughs> Charizard, right? Like, Charizard's <laughs> funny. Like, I guess. Listen, when he's able to hit, like, the Nair and then his opponent's, like, rolling behind and then he charges up the Flare Blitz, you're like, oh, no, because yeah. you know exactly what's going to happen. 